magical creators, Lilu here. I'm in woodlands in the new forest with Linda Mangaro, my Linda. I just... Hello, Lilu. I had to come and see this lady, this very, very special person I'm next, sitting next to. And the tour wouldn't be the tour without her. Um, if I'm holding this mic with a little Lilu LED, the logo that you've seen so many times, is because Linda has designed it. She totally got the design. She totally got the vision of the tour. And I love how now you're doing some for every single country. Yeah. So you're a graphic designer yeah. and you're a published author now. I am, yeah, I am now a graphic designer, artist and author, yeah. And I, I know it's been a pleasure to create this Lululet design for you and support the tour and the website. And yeah, we're making some of these for every country you go to now, which is really cool and fun. I just love it because, uh, I, as you know, you know the, the tour functions through donations, through the support of everybody watching. And so people like Linda make it possible and she takes care of the website. She takes care of the logo design and she is just so giving it's just such a pleasure and I feel these days it's so important to be surrounded by good people people with similar intentions similar visions yeah I think when you um when you really start living your passion and you you really tune into what you love to do and just do it day in day out then the universe kind of lines you up with those people and brings them into your life things you don't even have to look things come along and people come along just like I happen to see a video of you one day and you have Michael to Lizier yes and you were looking for um, somebody to create a logo for you and and I just knew I think you you start living in a place where you you know you, you don't have to ask things just happen and you just know they're meant to be when you're really living your purpose and you know doing what you love and what you came here to do it, things just get handed to you on a plate that's how it really seems to be working now and and I love it yeah and it all started from a failure on my end supposedly fla failure because somebody else was supposed to design it and then this person it was always a struggle to get this person and this person was not showing up and I'm like oh no this is not gonna happen and here I'm having this coaching session on the law of attraction uh, and putting out the good vibe and 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 really putting our feelings in, in what we want and then all of a sudden the next day in 24 hours it manifests really fast you've been applying the law of attraction since many oh, many times absolutely yeah many times yeah i think sometimes when things seem like they're not working out um and things are difficult they're, they're just not meant to be and it's there as contrast it just shows us you know there's an easier way than this and then you can you, you just say this isn't working out this isn't meant to be and then the right thing comes along and it just works out how yeah. it's meant to but yeah law of attraction is a big part of it and then things rippled in your life just one thing led to the next and I feel there's so much more but it, I just love it how um, from designing and from websites now you came in to the tour in Colorado do you remember yeah, yeah. and and then since then you've been inspired to Paint. So Linda, here we are now on Skype. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> I love it how uh, through one uh, technical difficulty that we had, thanks to technology, we're able to continue this interview. It's like yeah. uh, you're you're so busy now that you don't have time to finish even the interview with me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have to squeeze you in now. <laughs> But it's great to be able to talk to you again, you know, to have another opportunity to continue our conversation. So I'm always grateful for that. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm grateful for your work. And we were just at that place where we were talking about the law of attraction and how through the interview with Michael Lozier, um, you, we, we met and we connected and you contacted me to do the, 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 the Lilulette. And, yes. and then you came to the tour. We're just at that part where we're saying you came to the tour in Colorado and that was your first time in the US and you were inspired to then, I mean, I just want to show the rippling effect of the law of attraction, you know, one thing yeah. leading to the next, you actually now are painting too, out of this, this uh, interview that I did back then. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I, I've always been an artist but um, and creative, but I've always um, drawn with pencils, and I always had this kind of um, thing that I can't paint. You know, I, I tried when I was younger, and it was a mess, and and, I, and then I had this story that I can't paint. So um, when when I was with you in Colorado and for that amazing amazing week um, awesome. of adventure, I was lucky enough to be with you when you interviewed um, the artist Malcolm Farley, and we were at his. Um, his exhibition yeah. and 
I was so inspired by his amazing paintings that were just so colourful and full of energy and expression. And while you were interviewing him and I was watching from the background looking at his paintings, I just had this little voice inside of me, which, by the way, is the same voice that told me to contact you when I saw the Michael Lozier interview, um, saying, you can do this, you know, you can paint, you should paint. And, and just... I knew I was supposed to, and I think I remember saying to you at the time, "I'm going to paint when I get home." And, um, so when I, when I was back in England, I um, I went out and bought some canvas and bought some paints, and one day I just put my music on and I just went went for it. Um, first of all, I have to say it was the most amazing experience because I tuned in really deeply into a place of me that I connect to sometimes, which is just this inspired place where you know that energy is coming in from somewhere else. And, um, and second of all, I was amazed by the painting. You know, I can paint, you know, um, we all can. And, and, I, and I was meant to do it. And I uh, did a few paintings. I was inspired to paint um, some dancers and, and different things. And I posted them online. And from that, um, I started getting getting people getting in touch with me asking for portraits and um kind of snowballed from there so yeah now that's another thing I do I paint and um for me it's it's not just another great aspect of my um my business it's self-expression it's another form of self-expression it's another way of meditating of connecting within and yeah, yeah it's it, it's amazing yeah and what's amazing too is that uh, I want to let everybody know that you have three boys and you have moved and you have changed houses and you have done all those other things like you have this really busy life but at the same time I never feel you um, I'm sure you have your moment of stress and overload like everybody but you do really just you're in the flow I never had from you like with the help with the website or the logos or the this uh, a feeling of, of, of this is too much or I'm you know you're always there and that's really the attitude I think we should all have now and that yes, you're showing that us yeah, showing up in the moment and being present and, and saying yes. I think it's learning to listen to my inner voices. And if, if, if something's right for me and it's aligned with my purpose and what I'm meant to do, it's, it's, I don't sit down and question it and say, is this right for me? I just know. It's just a feeling. And, yeah, I do a lot. I, I, you know, I have a lot going on. I have a lot of projects going on. Yeah. But um, I love them all. So they're not hard, you know. They don't feel hard. Yeah. But another thing I think it's important to say is, you know, there is fear that comes up sometimes on this journey, you know, when um, these things come along, it's like constantly um, getting out of my comfort zone and, and pushing my boundaries. It's like I feel like we have a certain capacity for what we can experience in our lives, for the good we can allow in our lives. We have a story. This is me and this is my comfort zone. And when you stay within that comfort zone, you know, you, you can end up feeling really... Um, bored and um, resentful and like you know I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do what am I here for you really need to push yourself out of your comfort zone this journey when you're led on this journey through law of attraction through things coming to you it's not always easy you know there's times when you know when I've in the past felt real anxiety and real fears coming up in fact for a long time my story was I'm a sufferer of anxiety uh, for a long, long time before I met you and before I really embraced this journey. I really held myself back for a lot of years because I was scared of fear. I, I really was scared of fear itself and I, and I really, really suffered with the fear because I told myself I didn't want to feel fear. So when um, I can remember times when... Um, when I'd first left university and I was looking for a job, I was so terrified of job interviews. Um, it's, there were certain situations, being the centre of attention, public speaking, which scared me so much. And I have my story, oh, I, I have anxiety, I can't do it. And I remember I would be up all night before a job interview or something, I didn't want to do a presentation. Um, I'd be pacing the floor and crying and feeling that anxiety going through me and I thought it was something external to me I thought this is something that's happening to me this anxiety and I would then just say no I'm not doing it I would hide I would I'd say I'm not going I can't do it I can't deal with this fear and one important thing I've learned in the last couple of years or the last few years while I've been on this journey is that fear is is a part of us and it's a part of us that leads us it, it leads us to a part of ourselves that just needs to be loved and accepted. So now I don't say, I want you to go away fear. Yeah. Now when I feel a bit of anxiety. I think, ah, oh, there's another opportunity for me to expand my comfort zone. And now when I feel that fear, and if it's something I know I'm meant to do, I say yes anyway, and I go for it. And I know I'm going to feel the fear, 
But I know that it's okay, that the fear is just a natural part of expanding myself and of stepping out of my comfort zone. And by doing so, the fear, as soon as I look at it and acknowledge it and say, I know what you are, you're just a part of me, you know, you're a part of me that's scared, but that's okay. You're not the, the real, full, authentic me. I can step into the real, full, authentic me and look after that part of me that's scared. You can come along with me and, and then everything feels so much easier. The fear's not as bad anymore. And suddenly I've expanded what's possible in my life. And I think that's the key to really allowing these new opportunities and things to come to us. Because we're saying yes instead of saying no. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really been a huge part of um, how my, my kind of journey has snowballed and these amazing things keep coming along and, and, and happening in my life. Yeah, you're, you're so much more comfortable in your beingness. You're shining, you're beaming. You, you always had that. And I feel we always, we all have that. It's just a matter of, as you just said, allowing ourselves to experience those things and daring to, to face those fears or, or bring them along in our journey. Absolutely. You, you, did, you did not really grow up in, a, in, a, in, in you know, the best situation. I mean, you were a rebel. <laughs> I was for some time as a teenager. Yes, I was, you know, um, as so many people. Um, not everybody comes from the perfect family with, you know, um, the ideal 2.4 children and two parents who are happily married. You know, it doesn't always work like that. And, it can, you know, it's confusing sometimes as children and when these things happen. Yeah, um, and, and for me too. And when I reached my teenage years, I was really, really confused, you know. Um, I was confused about... Um, what what I am, I had all these questions about what am I here for, what am I, what, what's going on in the world, but I think that the situations that we grow up in and we're born into, um, and a, a large part of my journey was my father's problems with addiction, and that there were certain things, you know, in my life that really, I didn't understand, they were confusing, but I think that it, it's a gift, you know, we, I believe we choose the situations we're born into because they allow us the challenges and the, the experiences in life that will allow us to to learn and to learn what we really are and to accept and to grow and so but but of course it takes a while to understand this and I did have a few years there where I was a bit of a teenage rebel and I was a bit confused I I didn't always have it sorted and know exactly what was going on and that's just part of the journey you yeah. know it's, it's part of my journey and I wouldn't change anything and you had time to um to also write books like Awakening of the Dream Writer. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's I, I, for I, teens. That's typically for teens. I, I, I can see in your journey how you really want to be there for the teens. And I have the, the kids one here that I absolutely love. And I know yeah. that you want to support uh, children and teenagers along in their journey. Absolutely. You have yourself three boys that are becoming so teens. I'm, so I'm passionate about ins inspiring young people because, as, as we were just saying, you know, we, we were all children once. We were all teenagers once. We all have questions. And, and I think it's about shifting from living, you know, the story and the conditioning and what we see growing up and what we're told the world is to really stepping into another way of being, to really asking questions about the world and saying maybe everything's not as I'm told it is or, you know, as I perceive it to be. And I think if we can encourage young people to have an open mind to ask these questions, um, well, that's the best gift we can give them. And so, yeah, I, I, I've always loved, loved, loved to write. And I wrote my two books for um, young people. I wrote the one you're holding up, Where's the Magic Wand?, um, to try and teach some of these things I'm learning at a really basic level. That's my little wizard who teaches little Tommy. Oh, no. Little Tommy Wonders is the series. And, and the wizard comes along to, to teach him, you know, that we're all magic and that we create our lives at a really basic level. I think this is knowledge we can give our children. There's, there's so many cultures in the world where, um, you know, these spiritual, basic spiritual truths about life are kind of taught from a young age, but in a lot of um, the Western world, they're not. We don't teach these things to our children. You know, we teach that um, quite often through society, not necessarily as parents, but through society. We teach that you're, you know, you're born, you have to have a career and make as much money as you can, get as much stuff as you can. That's what makes you successful, and then you die, and that's it. And quite often, I think there's missing a, an aspect of you know, so, some knowledge of what we really are, that we're far more than that. We're far more than our physical bodies and we're here with a purpose and that, you know, life's not, death's not something to be feared and, and that we're, we're powerful beyond belief. We're here to do what we love and there's so many things. So I love to try and teach this through my books. 
And now um, through programs. I just love it. Oh, Linda, you're such a perfect example. I love you so much. You're such a perfect example of what's possible. I, I just see you keep on opening up and now you're, you're teaching kids. I mean, how fantastic yeah, is that? You're going to schools. Tell us about it. Um, and yeah, this was just another amazing thing that came along. Um, again, when you're in that flow and you're tuned in and you're willing to say yes to, to anything, even if it scares you, <laughs> if it feels right and it's aligned with your purpose. Um, I just happened to meet um, a guy who was a head teacher at a school um, in Worthing where I was living and um, we were talking about my books and he said, you have to come into the school. Um, and um, it was kind of all put to me on a plate and I thought, well, yes, I'd love to connect with children. You know, one thing, it's one thing writing the books, but to be able to go in and, and actually work with the children. So I said, um, you know, instead of just coming in and showing my books and talking to them about the book, I'd love to actually come in and really work with them. And, and I think a real gift for me in life has been my creativity, my ability to um, pick up a pencil and draw, um, pick up a pen and write a poem or a story, um, I've only really learned s since I was an adult how important that has been to me. It's a form of self-expression. And if we give ourselves um, a, a way of expressing every part of ourselves, even the parts that might sometimes be confused, hurt, you know, as especially when you're younger and you're, you're, you're confused, hurt, in pain, angry. If you can give yourself a form of expression through writing or through drawing, then you're expressing all those parts of yourselves and then they're not going to come out unconsciously. You're becoming really conscious of all parts of yourself. So this is what I've been going into the schools and working with children on creative writing and really encouraging them to, you know, to, to develop a passion for writing in order to express themselves. And they've written some amazing short stories. I was so bowled over by the results of the workshop. They really put real feeling in and real expression in there. And um, uh, yeah, so it's just been amazing. It's such an honor to be able to go into the schools and work with children in this way. Show us, show us, I, I think you're around here because I just came to visit you, of course, as we saw at the beginning of interview in Rome. So is there the little article, the little newspaper? That's it, Tell yes. us about that no. story. I mean, You've got guys, the memory. Wherever you are, guys, this is, this is, this is a real true story. Look, she ended up in a newspaper with the kids around and this was not expected. No, I didn't even know. I mean, obviously, I knew a photographer had come in and taken um, the picture during the workshop, which the school arranged. I had no idea he was coming in. And then um, he said, you know, we, we come around and take pictures of events and things. So um, it, it may or may not get used. And then um, one day my friend just said to me, I saw you in the paper. And, um, and I had no idea. And I read the article and they um, titled it Magical Mangoro, which I oh. uh, me. <laughs> club, and yet, club, club. It's just, um, you know, seeing things show up in your life, amazing things show up when you're tuned into that flow. And it's, it's um, and trusting. I saw you trusting big time. Absolutely. Re really trusting. I mean, it's, it, I think another key as well as stepping into your fear and, and befriending your fear is, um, and my fear, I just own it, my fear is, um, is really understanding that it all happens inside you know we we try and change things on the outside we think i'm not happy with my life i'm not happy with this i'm not happy with that and we might make changes on the outside but i i don't think that ever really has any lasting effects it's about doing the work within and really going inside and 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 working on well, what what are you really tuned into are you tuned into love and possibility and wonder and magic what are you feeling inside because when you change your perspective inside you suddenly see your world on the outside change to reflect that you know everything really happens on the inside and really making that kind of really getting that can, can change everything in your life um, it did for me definitely that was a huge part of my understanding yeah and you're a yes to life you're a yes you don't know sometimes I'm sure how it's going to happen or how you're going to put it together but you Absolutely. allow yourself to be in that place. You allow your, you just know you're, 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 you probably, as I'm doing on the tour, you know, you just, you just found yourself in those places. You're like, wow, okay, now there we are. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes you, sometimes you have an idea, you think, uh, sometimes I have an idea and I think, well, you know, this is meant to be. And uh, like when I get a story, like with the Dream Riders, the book for the teens, you know, I, that story just was in my head so strongly. And I know the story and the characters are all reflections of parts of me, but it's also there's a bit of magic in there and there's, there are some lessons in there for the teens. Now, I knew I was supposed to write this story because 
it's that feeling, that buzz, I'm meant to do this, I'm meant to do this. I wrote the book, I had no idea what would happen with it. Of course, I had a vision, you know, I, I wanted it to be published. Um, I had that vision, but I, I knew that I couldn't make it happen, you know. I knew I couldn't just knock on a publisher's door and it would just happen. I had to believe inside that I was meant. it was meant to happen, I was meant to be doing it, and that the right things and the right people and the right opportunities will come along, and they have. Just like I know inside of me that... Um, I have a real vision and feeling that it will be on the screen one day. You know, I see it as a TV show or a movie, but I'm not sitting here knocking down on all the directors and producers' doors trying to make it happen because I feel that when I tune into that vision, it, you know, it, it will come to me. I'll be, I'll be beaming that vision of, of it already having happened and all the people and opportunities and possibilities will just come along and I'm not attached to any outcomes and that's how I really work with everything you know I, I have visions and I do what I'm inspired to do and then I trust as you said trust is so important that what's meant to happen will happen and 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 it's and kind of just are. a yeah just sitting in the mystery of life and, and loving it yeah that is so right. I, that reminds me of just the interview I'm going to post uh, that, was, that happened right after you with Team Freak that is a philosopher and it was about the mystery experience and how we just have to, to welcome that mystery every day. That is so Absolutely. That. Yeah, because the mind, our mind, really wants to know all the answers. <laughs> so when you're living on that lo kind of level of the mind, you're, you're kind of like, but how is it going to work? And how is this going to happen? And how will I make this successful? And, and you know, I slip back into that all the time. I'll, I might wake up and think, right, well, why hasn't this happened? I need to do this. And then I remember and I think, no, because the part of me that's creating this world is bigger than my mind and therefore I can't always know it, you know I, I have to be willing to live in that mystery and in that not knowing because that's where I allow things to come in that I might not even have imagined or conceived were possible you know I really allow for possibility then and that's that's where magic happens yes oh, yeah I'm so so happy we got to finish this conversation over Skype that you get to share this because this is a true life example and that's that's what I really go for in the interviews on your 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 pure gem pure beauty I'm really really excited that you went beyond your fears and that we connected in this way Linda and we were doing all those things together and uh, and I know this is just the beginning it's it's a, just yeah. a new chapter again so Thank you so much, and please give a big kiss to Jake for his 10th birthday today. Oh, I will. Oh, yeah, Jake. <laughs> and thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure talking to you again, Nick Leo. I look much forward love. to everything that's to come. Much love. <laughs>